Welcome to the Soupcast, presented by Justin Soup. What is up, guys? Welcome to episode one with my friend Kyle. What up? So, what's up? Talk about some ice fishing, talk about some funny life stories. So, what's the closest that you've ever fell into the water? Uh, I've never actually fallen in the water, but we were on a forest lake the other night, and my buddy got stuck, all drunk. And he's like just spinning his back wheels and they spun all the way through the ice and there was water on the ice. I got stuck trying to push him out. So now I got a mind like I'm stuck in four wheel drive. So I'm just like, I can't go anywhere. He's stuck. We're sitting basically in someone's backyard. Like we dropped someone off. I left to go all the way across the lake. He got stuck and he's just spinning him through the ice and in two wheel. Wasn't going nowhere. So now he's like all the way through the ice. His ass ends sitting on the ice. Wheels are through the ice. Like it's sketchy. Like it's, it's not. Scary. It's not good ice. We're right by the shore. It's fucking. It was getting scary. And I was walking through people's backyards. I'm like, can you, you know, someone help? You got a wheeler? Like, can you come back here with a truck? And everyone's like, do we need to call the cops? I'm like, no. I was. I was. I'm trying to help him get out. He's screwed. I need an extra hand to push my truck out, and I can bump him out. It Your truck sucked. Got stuck too. Yeah, and like a couple. Not even like a half inch of ice. Like, it just dug a little groove, and my tires would not go anywhere. I was just sitting there spinning them. You get out? Like, what happened? Yeah, we ended up getting out. He ended up actually taking off and found somebody, and then they came back, and I ended up finding a rope in my truck, and these guys came up with with a new truck and no strap, nothing. I'm like, what did you, like, why did you even go get them for? You know what I mean? I was like, I don't know what they're, what they were supposed to do with no strap or anything, but I ended up hooking the rope to Buddy's truck and then hooked it to my trailer hitch and then just like the slightest nudge got me out so then i went in front of my buddy and just put it in reverse and just smoked him in the front end and pushed him out because we couldn't get him out of the yeah. ice his tires were through the ice the, the frame was sitting on the ice there was no Nothing. way we could really move him because if we tried to tow him out we'd just dig our own <coughs> hole so i had to like back into him super fast and i like bent his uh the support bar for yeah. his bumper in and but we, i mean we got out Almost lost my ice house on the on the lake that day. No one got a line in the water. We were sitting there stuck from, I mean, probably like four or five hours. We were sitting there trying to get him out. No one got a line in the water. I popped my house up and had to go rescue him, and then never could rescue him. So my house was sitting, just popped time. up in like a city of people. So I mean, it could have disappeared at any moment. Same day, buddy, like ripped his bumper off his truck. We were doing shitties on the ice, and he caught a drift or something. Ripped his whole bumper off his truck. It was bad. It was a bad yeah. day. Whoa. No one caught any fish, and that was the second lake we went to. In the day, yeah, the first because we, we got up kind of early and went to one lake, and it was just booty and dude was bitching the whole time. So we went to a different lake, and then he gets stuck and screws the whole like trip up. That's a long time to be stuck. Like, <laughs> yeah, it lake, sucked, like, dude. Not no progress either. Just yeah, like, it sucked. It was definitely one of the worst times fishing I've been had in a long time. Damn, my my closest one is where I just like I was walking. I don't know what I was doing, but I was walking on the lake. The lake was behind my grandma's house, so we just walked across the road. And we were just about done, and I stick my whole foot through an ice hole that someone covered up. I think I might have covered it up earlier in the day. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm just like, bloop. And it was just, like, the scariest thing because, like, it's just free fall. Like an ice fishing hole? Yeah, ice fishing hole, yeah. Just one Fuck. foot got stuck or got went through, but it was, like, it's so fast, and you have no, no like, oh, yeah, you thought don't... about that your foot's going to go through that it just right through yeah i've had like, that happen a bunch i just lit my boot on fire actually not that long ago because i was standing too close to the heater and i just my buddy's like dude you're on fire and i'm like what my fucking plastic shit's on fire in my boot and wrecked my new boots and because i was just trying to stay warm it was one of the warmer days but there was water all over the ice and it was just bad conditions and shit was slipping all over the place and our feet were all soaking wet so they were cold so i was trying to stand by the heater and fucking burnt my boot I'm like man I've heard of people, like, uh, going out on, like, one inch of ice with two-by-fours and just, like, walking across the ice, like, like that skis on. I mean, people do it. <laughs> people are crazy. I won't go on the ice with less than, like, three inches. I'll go fishing on three, four inches ice. Well, yeah. That's real early ice, and you're out there, I mean, with a big metal rod stabbing the ice and making sure. Because if that rod goes through you're with no. your with just the strength of you hitting it, you, you're not walking down. Like, you do not want to go that way. You it's ever sketchy. have to turn around and just say no? Yeah, we almost walked into a spring on, I don't remember what lake it was. It was over in, like, Chisago County. I think it was over by Stacy, kind of. And it was, 
uh, we were walking and everything was fine. There's pockets all over the lake. It's a spring fed lake, I want to yeah. say. So there's like, there's springs. All yeah, over. there's springs all over the place. So I almost walked into one of them because the ice went from like white to straight clear. And there's only like an inch or two of ice. And you could hear water running from the, one of the drains. Yeah. And we were walking right toward it. But it was dark. We only had so many lights. And I walked right up basically to the edge where the white stopped. And I'm like, dude, I can hear water. <laughs> like this is sketchy I'm turning around and so my buddy came up with his flashlight and we're trying to see and sure as shit like 10 feet from where we were standing just running water I'm like dude this is scary like I almost walked Damn. right into it because it was dark I've never done anything like that but the one lake that we'd fish on constantly our, our uh, friends of the family had an ice fishing shack they put up every year and there was a spring right off of the landing and, like, every year you'd see that spring, like, open. Yeah, that's, that's where it was. Yeah, we were trying like, to find the landing, and we were probably 20 feet from it to the, off to the right, and there was just a big open spot of water next to a drain, and you can hear it just flooding in. And it's like, dude, all we had to do was stick to this way a little bit. I'm, I almost walked right into it. Like, it was bad. If I didn't have my flashlight and I was just kind of feeling around, I mean, I could have hit bad ice yeah, and went in. There's, just, no, there's no telling. That's Because like the, the water's scariest. moving, so. That's the scariest to me. It never like, freezes all the way. Springs and shit and rivers ice freeze over i mean like the guy did you hear about that story from the guy that crossed the river downtown minneapolis no uh, his, yeah his gps told him to cross he said and it was uh right right by the um um the bridge we were going to go to today the stone arch yeah he yeah said it was like right under the stone arch and map told him to cross the river and you know that river rivers don't freeze like that and he just fell in and people had to come and save him and he said he was my walking map, yeah he was, he was walking and he said his maps told him to cross the river what and i, I bet you what happened is either he doesn't have an, he didn't have enough data or something something glitched and it was on a road or a pathway and he, he they, just tell him kept going forward yeah i told him that. you got to be pretty stupid to be like yeah my maps like, told me to walk on the lake it was like, like 3 a.m so i'm thinking he was probably fucking intoxicated oh or, yeah he was especially especially something. down there downtown yeah i'd imagine there's bars right off the river uh, yeah he's trying to i was just trying to walk home man i don't know He's like, yeah, he had a hotel downtown, too. Like, he wasn't even from here. So he's like, oh, ice? Like, I can walk oh, that. Oh, Jesus. And didn't even give it a second thought. I mean, there's people from not here all the time. Dude, there's people down south don't have ice. They don't ice fish. There's this food truck I go to called OG Roland Nolans. They sometimes are up in Cambridge, but, I mean, they're out. They're based in Minneapolis somewhere. You got to find them. Uh, super good food, but we're... I seen them, and I was talking. It was right as it was getting cold. And I was like, man, I can't wait to be out ice fishing. The lady's like what she's like you guys go out on, on the ice and fish i'm like oh yeah she's like well that's fucking nuts we don't do that back <laughs> south we don't we stay no water is open or we stay away from it like water doesn't really freeze down there you know what i mean yeah so, uh, there they're just they're just dumbfounded they're like you're out on the ice like you're out fishing on a frozen lake I'm like, oh, yeah, there could be two feet of ice. We'll be fishing over 50 feet of water or more sometimes. I mean, you go to Lake of the Woods, it gets deep. You're fishing in, like, 30 to 50 feet of water in a lot of places we go. People like, don't that's, believe it. That's sketchy, dude. You're sitting on six, seven, eight inches of ice and 50 feet of water. Like People don't believe it, though. They're like, You'll what? sink and die. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I was a little kid, when I thought of ice fishing, I thought of that we were bringing the poles and we were casting towards the hole. I mean, I didn't really know. I'm just like, yeah. ice fishing, like, how the fuck are we going to get our... A rod's in the water. Like, it just makes no sense to me. But once I went, it was boring. And then ice shanties came, and I got a little older and drinking. And <laughs> yeah. then, then they got a little entertaining. Yeah, now it's fun. You go out there with some beers and some friends. and I got a nice hub, so it's not like we're just sitting on the ice. Yeah. My goal is to get a camper this year, a camper slash ice house. If I can get, like, a crank down, pop some holes in it or something. or Because then I can use it year-round. I can camp in it, and then I can drag it out on the ice, and it'd be... Cause you don't really want a pole. Yeah, but I can't hunt for three years. Oh yeah. Because okay. I had some, I had fucking got this stupid ticket because I okay. thought I was prepared, and I failed to uh, buy the ticket that I needed, like the right hunting pass. Oh. It was stupid. I bought the apprenticeship, and then I was supposed to buy a deer tag, and everyone was telling me the apprenticeship is good for one deer, you'll be fine. And I listened to everybody instead of reading the book, and got. Uh, fine. Yeah, fine. I got. I got. They don't play. I told them. I like. We got stopped by the DNR and the DNRs. You know, we, I had my license and everything. The guns were good and everything. We were But then he's like, "Well, where's your deer tag?" He's like, "I was like, I don't. I thought I was good for one buck with this apprenticeship, and then I had my small game tag." And he's like, "No." So he gave me a three hundred and I think it was a three hundred and eighty dollar ticket for admitting to be walking around the woods hunting for deer, even though I wasn't like 
I, I told him that I was hunting for deer, and it was enough for him to give me a ticket. Even though you told him yeah. that. And I told him, I was like, dude, I was informed by multiple different people and stores that if I bought my apprenticeship tag, I was good for one buck for two years. Well, you are, but you have to buy the deer tag as well. Oh. So I was misinformed, and just I should have read the book. Because now I can't hunt for three years oh, beca- so it because of it. Oh, so it three years then, too. I can still fish and everything, but I can't hunt for three years. I can't hunt nothing. Well, the reason why I don't hunt is because they, uh, I was part of the yearage where you had to do hunter safety, and I never did it as a little kid. So I was like 18, and I was like, well, I want to yep. try to hunt. Or 16, and I wanted to try to hunt, and I didn't want to go feel like a little kid. So I did it online, and then That's what I, did. I had to schedule it's like a 25 rain day. bucks. Yeah, I had to schedule a range day. And they never got back to me about it. So I was like, so I really? did the whole class. I See, now, it. I don't know. I don't know if they would have saved it. It was for Wisconsin, so. Oh, yeah. See, Minnesota, I'm not sure, like, if they save it. Like, if you complete it and then don't. Because there's a virtual range day. Okay. As you, for, that. for adults. Yeah. So you just do it right on a computer. You don't, there is no in person nothing. It's all on the computer. It's like 25 bucks. That's what I did. Okay, yeah. After the fact, I went and got all my shit and just made it you know look a little better but i still just paid the ticket instead of going in yeah because i went hunting <coughs> two years with my dad and each year like it was kind of a hassle to get my license because it was that mentorship hunting license thing yeah and i was so like the third year i was like okay so i'm going to do this so i sat down on the computer probably put like 40 hours in and did all the tests did all the reading completed everything 100 percent, and then it was like all right then you need to contact like the dnr or whatever and schedule a range day and that's what held me up yeah i did the whole fucking class but you just gotta keep day. up on it keep calling they got so many people going to do it well out here yeah but like in ryland or wisconsin we had one deer in our dnr office so i was like oh yeah i suppose way out there yeah so it was like seven thousand people you got one dnr in office unless you go to a different city which is like 30 to 45 minutes away and then i right. don't even know who the hell yeah here where they're booked up because I could have I could have gone and did an in-person field day yeah but I did the virtual field day but they still even recommended like you know go and see somebody if you're you know you're a beginning you're you don't really know your way around the guns and you're still like if you're a new beginner beginner they want you to still go take the field day but you don't have to they want to they want to just walk you through how yeah they want to you're not fucking up (laughs) yeah exactly they don't they don't want they that's the whole reason behind it is to, to prevent any hunting accidents People getting shot, they don't need to be shot because they're mistaking them for an animal somehow. I need to go go see my brother. He's got 13 guns. Within two years, he gathered his collection. He gathered his collection. Yeah. Yeah, That's what I'm working on. He's got at least one or two pistols. He's got, like, World War II guns, World War I guns, AK-47. Hell, yeah. Sounds like my brother. Punch. Yeah, and he's always finding more. His Christmas money from our grandma, he was, like, looking at a gun before he even got it. He's like, yep, I'm going to go get this. And he got it. Yeah, yeah. Right after that. <laughs> yeah. Sent me pictures on Instagram. He's like, look what I got. And I was like, dude, how many are you up to? Yeah, I got two on my list right now that I need to get. I'll have by summer. It's, it's, a, it's FN and this semi-automatic shotgun. It's built like an AR. It's bolt action. Sick. That sounds it's sick. Tight. It's a home defense, but it's, it's sick. You can still... Take it to the range. You can still hunt with it. I mean, it's a bolt action. Yeah, it's built like an AR, so you you rail it like this. It's dope. It's super dope. I can't wait to get so it. It's like seven hundred bucks. Value then? Like, guns actually increase in value. Okay. Guns are like one of the v- very few things that hold and increase value over the years. So like, if I were to buy, like, if I were to go spend fifteen hundred bucks or whatever on this engraved pistol and didn't touch it. And didn't like you even if I used it, but I cleaned it yeah. and kept it, you know, nice. It would just increase in value over the years. It would just keep going up because it's kind of like a collector's thing. Because like people take and ruin guns, you know what I mean, and then they're worthless. Yeah, yeah I've seen. But like that. you take a gun and take care of it and wear it in, and like now, you know what I mean? It's just a good gun. Yeah, they they go up in value. Yeah, that's what I was wondering because I like I was like, well, at least my brother's investing into something smart. Where at the end, if he's like, eh, I'm not really into this gun thing anymore, he can sell off his whole collection, just cash out, basically. Right. Because You'd have to wait a little bit. Like, I mean, if you were to buy a gun that costs, you know, 800 bucks, $1,000 now, two or three years from now, it could be 1500 bucks. Yeah. Like, for the same, for, it's just the same gun, same model, everything. More demand? I don't, I think that might be what it is. I don't remember exactly what they said, but the guy at the shop was telling me about it. He's like, if you want something... Don't hesitate. He's like, grab it now, because I mean, them prices could skyrocket at any time. 
It's kind of like scrap prices. They just go up and they fluctuate. It's weird. Huh. Yeah. I, I don't pay attention enough to guns. I, but yeah, I was like, at least like he can get all of his money back. It's not like a car where if you invest in a car, then you're not getting that 10 grand back. Yeah. No, it's depreciation. As soon as you pull it off the lot, it's like a third of its value is gone or something like that. A fourth of its value, I think. And very few cars actually even retain any value. Like, yeah, exactly. Like and they all, in, if they got no miles on them, sure. But every car goes to shit, especially in Minnesota. <laughs> the salt and the drivers, people just beat the piss out of their vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, very many, very few cars, like, actually, like, well, I guess the 70s and 80s, like, the, the muscle cars, like, the ones that people really want that could be beat to shit, and you still get a good number off it. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was talking about, like, his prize cars, you know, the ones he wants to collect, and he was saying to invest all the money into it is not worth it, but is it fun? Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> it's like people like the, like the type of cars that I like to build with big nasty systems and big rims and paint and stuff. You'll spend twenty five, thirty thousand dollars building a car, and you're only gonna sell it for like five to ten grand. You won't never get any of the money. Like some of the car audio I do, you'll have a fiberglass dash that'll cost two, three grand to make just the dash. And then now you got to pay for a five thousand dollar paint job if you want something crazy or like kind even kind of nice. I mean, paint's not cheap. Interior, and you'll never get any of that money back. No. Like, never. Audio kind of holds its value, but it's more or less that, like, it's so expensive. If you're if what you got is not broken, it's not all torn up, like it's in good condition, it'll mm-hmm. hold its value. But, like, cars, they, I mean, you want, like, a, like, I want to get, like, a 70-something, like, Caprice convertible. You're looking at, like, upwards of 10 grand or more to find a stock basic car that some old guy's been driving around since the 70s and been kept in his garage no rust you're looking at big money just to find a nice car with no rust and then i'm gonna have to put all the money into it to like the do audio. the system and the, the, the wheels and the i mean paint. the exhaust and do you want to do the motor up too and yeah dude, these cars get crazy expensive and you'll never get what you put into it out of it ever not unless it's a custom or a classic yeah, even and then, even I mean, the custom, you have to find you'll put $100,000 into a car, and you're only going to get twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 for it. Unless you found that one person. That yeah, one unless person someone will pay wants it, your car, like, you're, oh, it's crazy how much money you lose building cars. You'll never get all that money back. But it's fun. I love it. I mean, but if you had a, a shop that, like, you just built cars for other people, you could make, like, a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. The people that actually build the cars make a shit ton of money, like... I do most of the stuff on my own, but like I pay nine hundred dollars just to have a sub box built. It's wood. It's wooden fucking carpet. I paid nine hundred nine nine something to have it built. <coughs> I had to buy an alternator to keep up with my batteries. My batteries were like three hundred bucks a pop, and those were like cheaper ones. My alternator was like seven sixty, and it'll only fit in that one car unless I get it uh, sent it in and have it like recased. Yeah, this retarded expensive. Everything's super expensive. Damn. <clears throat> well, see, I'm trying to get my car uh, wrapped after I get the hood and everything done. I'm trying to get it wrapped. That's gonna be like fifteen to two. two to have a yeah for a good job, yeah. Yeah, for well, you want a good job. Yeah, you don't want a cheap wrap. No, because cheap wraps like plasti dip. It's just oh, plasti. You don't want to screw horrible. yourself. Yeah, you want it to look nice. You want to be able to wash your car, go and spend the money on it. I've seen people, or even the wheels I had on my original car, they are black plasti dipped, and this even when I had it, it started to peel and chip and it just looked horrible yeah and then when you're peeling it off you're also peeling off another layer and the another layer is the actual rim and it's like well fuck i just fucked my rims up because you're trying to get the plastic dip off because it looks horrible yeah because you chip off the rims and shit yeah there, there's <laughs> no way to win with that cheap stuff you guys get them painted or powder coated marie what's that what's that one uh what's that one paint job you want to do the with the water the hydro hydro dipping, dipping. yeah hydro dipping you know, hydro dip everything but that's expensive is it really and it's it's um i don't really know enough about it to say whether how long it lasts or not because people hydro dip deer skulls steering wheels rims shoes uh, shoes Cowboys, hats everything rims, you can everything. you can take and hydro dip anything is that water or what is that do you know it's um so they have if i remember right it's uh <clears throat> i want to say they have like a like Almost elect- electricity. It's like a static. 
I forget how they make it actually work, but they lay a film of whatever your design is in there and you have to do it super steady. And then like, it's something about the static in the water. It makes the paint and everything stick, stick to, what, to anything. Yeah, it's weird. But I don't know if it scratches off or like, I don't know how durable it is. I don't know anyone that's ever done it. See, I, I know there's was... a couple hydro dipping places in Minnesota though. I wanted to have some rims done, but. They do it at like uh, Forest and Lost Lands on your arms. If, but it, it's not like the same thing. But really? It's like, yeah, like it's just paint. Like they drip the paint in there, like a normal hydro dipping, um, and then they have you put your arm in, and then you know they do the whole thing. Because you can, I've seen people kind of do it with spray paint and water. Yeah, I've seen that too. That's why I was wondering. And then I don't know. Some of them turn out pretty cool. I imagine you'd probably have to put a clear coat over that. Yeah. Because even you'd want to after you're done for sure. That paint chips really easy. Like you scratch one piece of metal thing over it, if it's like a metal or whatnot, it just it's gonna ruin it. Right. I've done it. I did it at work. My boss told me to clean some wheels, and the alloy guy painted over the scratches or whatever. And I put some uh, mineral spirit on it, right? And the fucking paint came right off. And I was like, well, cause yeah. He, he wanted me to clean the the spray over the overspray on the wheel. He oversprayed the the alloy color onto the wheel, the actual wheels when he was hmm. fixing them. And he's like, yeah, take this off. And I used, you know, the mineral spirit, the adhesive remover, and just started coming off. And I was like, well, I hope you don't see this because... Yeah, I just <laughs> ate it. Yeah, like, you just ate some money because I used the wrong thing. Because he never said, like, how to take it off. He was really like, oh, you know, just use this. And I did that. And I was like, it's not coming off. It's like, it made no sense. Probably just use the mineral spirits? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, that shit will eat everything. Oh, it does. It it's like <laughs> it clean smells pennies. so good too. Or the wheel, um, the wheel shine. The wheel shine's like very chemically bad for you, but yeah. it smells so goddamn good. It smells sweet almost. Yeah. But you can like any surface like car car dealerships like lie like any surface that is black or plastic you spray that stuff on even the engine bay you can make a muddy looking uh, engine like just the the dust covered just look shiny and black like brand new yeah but it's just that that wheel shine it's like that's such a cheat it's all them chemicals they eat everything yeah any kind of dirt and debris or any kind of oil anything that got on there just eats it right up oh it just it looks good but it's it doesn't (laughs) it looks fake yeah it looks so good it looks fake because the one engine we use the fake shine yeah that's what it is i think that's why it's so bad for you because chemically like it's it's fire it's ha- fire hazard and then it's also really bad for your respiratory. Yeah, is what it is. And I only use gloves. I don't use masks. You know, I don't have no. I don't. Work. No one really <laughs> does is at the deal at the detailing places. But I mean, it's still not be good to breathe in them stuff in. Like, dude, you should have heard good the OSHA, to be breathing the OSHA stuff person in. that came in. <coughs> the dude came in and I went to the meeting after. But he's like, "Is this tire shine?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "I'm gonna write it down on there for you." So he did. And then later on in the day, I found out who worked for OSHA, and I was like, "I fucking figured." That he worked for them, but he was the. Chillest. He labeled your bottle. He labeled my bottle what what it was, and it was tire shine. So later on, he, I went to the meeting because one of my managers asked me to, and he was the chillest dude that worked for OSHA. He was kind of like, "Well, I can't really tell you not to do that because that's productive, but what I can tell you, and it was like, yeah, so, because they were talking about brake cleaner. You know, brake. You probably know what brake cleaner. Yeah, is. brake cleaner is fucking be very, very flammable. Eats everything. Yeah. Yeah, and he was talking about this one dealership where they fucking exploded the whole place because they used brake cleaner. And then they use one of those um, those power clean mops, like at high schools or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they ran it over, and it's so flammable that it just fucking really just exploded. Yeah, he was telling us like a lot of horror stories like that. And then a lot of mechanics were like not wanting to use brake cleaner after that. They're like, damn. Yeah, brake cleaner is gnarly. Like it does the job apparently, but and it dries super fast too. So you can use brake cleaner to like you really shouldn't, but you can use brake cleaner to clean like mass airflow sensors. Oh shit! Okay. Like you can clean the screen off with them, and there's a little sensor that's in the screen. You can because it dries fast enough that it doesn't wreck it, but they don't really recommend it. There's mass airflow sensor cleaner that you buy. It's just, just another spray, but yeah, brake cleaner. You clean. I mean, you take paint off shit with that. Brake cleaner is gnarly. I've never used. It. I don't have to use it in detail, but yeah, that dude was the, the gnarliest OSHA dude. Now every time I've ever thought of OSHA, I was I always thought they're gonna crack down on you. Like, no, you shouldn't do that. But this guy was yeah. like, well. I mean, I'm going to advise you not to do that, but I can't tell you not to do that. Dude, OSHA's crazy, man. I worked, 
we were doing uh I helped build the tallest apartment building in Mankato, I want to say, right next to the Mayo Clinic. It was in between a floral shop and a, and a <coughs> Mayo Clinic. We watched, yeah. we watched a helicopter come and land all day and, like, drop people off. And we had the this railing, like, because we were up on, like, the second or third floor. So the railing around the whole building that we were that was supposed to protect us was, um, it was like, two two-by-fours and then another two two-by-fours and then a brace. So it was just like this... It basically looked like a cheap hurdle and these cheap hurdles were just set there so now like you can just knock it off the roof but it's still a fence so it's like osha approved tech like kind of thing if yeah. like if they were to come out you still have a barrier so In it's between. like ooh, it's so sketchy and then we had to wear harnesses well the harnesses were only good if you fell over the building so now if you fall in the building because we we're doing floors yeah. say you fall two three stories down that bungee is not that long. It's not that short. The bungee's measured. It's measured from, like, they anchor it in a certain spot, and yeah. then it'll be measured to the ground. So you'll fall off the side of the building, and you'll have, you know, six, seven feet before you hit the ground still. So it'll catch you and kind of bungee back, and you'll be safe. If you fall through the floor, you're screwed. Like, really? you're just hitting the floor, gonna and you're going to die. Like, really? or if not die, be severely injured. Yeah. But it's, it's weird, like... You'd have to, you have to readjust it every time, but it's like, it's OSHA approved <laughs> because if you fall off the side of the building, you're saved. And then like, you're just supposed to be safe at work to not fall through the floor. You're just supposed to watch yourself. Yeah. Cause like, if you're trying to like lay a truss and you slip and fall or like, or anything happens, you just slip down in the hole you go. That's scary, dude. People get hurt all the time doing that. And with the harness on. And then because you have the harness on, you can't sue. Oh, you can't get workman's comp or whatever. Yeah, well, you can't sue. Say, like, if you... Say, like, if they're supposed to have a harness and didn't, and you fall, you could sue the shit out of them because your boss is supposed to have a harness. It's not the employee's job. It's You know what I mean? It's, it's the, the boss. It's the bosses to make sure that they have, like, a safety net, basically, that they can hook up to. The employees really don't know no better. They're not the one. They just show up for work. So, like, now that you hurt yourself but you had a harness on, you can't sue. <laughs> It's dumb, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, the, the only time I've ever done anything like that was my light construction job. It was with Mon Sewer Construction, and we were building a deck. We dismantled the whole deck to the point where there wasn't a deck and then rebuilt the whole deck. We had no harnesses, no nothing. We just climb up and down the scaffolding. And I've never yeah. done anything like that before, so I was just sitting there, like, shaking, and they were trying to have me be productive, and I'm like... How the hell am I supposed to concentrate on putting the screw in when I'm trying to concentrate on not falling off this thing? And it's just like shaking back and forth. And I'm just like, yeah. how are you guys like seriously okay? And they're they're just telling me like, oh, just wait until the summer when we're we're building roofs and shit. And I was like, no, I won't get I on no roof. I can't do that. That's where I drew the line. I was like, this this is cool and all, but I need I found another gig <laughs> real quick. That place we were building in Mankato was like luxury condos. I think yeah. is what it turned out to be. That was the last building I ever helped on i won't go i won't do the heights no more it's not worth it like you make good money but fuck do you really hurt yourself doing that stuff yeah this summer i'll be making 25 bucks an hour doing concrete but it's like it's not very it's not consistent like it's uh it's all residential work so they bring me with when they need a brute basically yeah they need an extra hand they'll bring me in but then i'll be standing decks this summer too hopefully i can get the deck standing started and we're we'll be making like staining yeah, He's like, like we'll, re, oh, okay. we'll come by, we'll come, my buddy's got a contract, so he's got like a whole, like townhome yeah. complex, basically, and they all got decks on them, and it's like 130-something decks, and we go by and pressure wash the old shit off, the old paint, and pressure wash them, get all get them all bare, and then come by and stain them, and just move on to the next one. Well, that's a pretty, that's pretty easy. Yeah, and you make good-ass money. Like, are was, any of the decks up high, or are they all Second around? story. Okay, I mean, that's not too bad, but that's still kind of scary. At least you're not dismantling yeah. them. No, no, we don't dismantle them at all. We just stand there with a ladder or right up on top and pressure wash the old stain off, clean it up, and then restain it and move on to the next one. That's Fix cool. anything if there's, you know, a, if there's, like, a noticeable break. We'll, like, say something to them and see if they want us to fix it. And that's not their expense, though. It's, that's the condos or whatever, right? Mm, just, I think it all depends on if they own it. Okay. I'm not really sure. Yeah, some of those places are rented. <coughs> I haven't worked for them yet. It was supposed to be, uh, was, I was supposed to last year, but I just had a bunch of shit going on, so I never went in. And then this year, I told him I was going to help him with it. And he said he'd be making anywhere from like 30 to like 70 bucks an hour. It just depends oh, yeah. on how much stuff we got coming in. 
What Congress? It's, it's all cash, which sucks. You know, in the oh, yeah. in the long run. But or not being able to claim anything. Yeah, I can't. I don't have nothing on paper, but yeah. Um, what that sucks trying to get a car or like a place. Like I make all this money, but I don't have proof of any of it. I like, got the I got the other problem. Credit. <laughs> I got I got credit problems. Yeah. You got to get that credit karma, dude. Uh, I went and got uh, a, I, I went and got a Kohl's karma. card, and I just been spending a little bit and paying it off, and I got like a almost a seven hundred credit score now. Oh my my biggest issue was because i just signed up for too much shit and then i didn't realize how it worked my parents were bad with it and yeah so in the long run now my coworkers told me how to like get out of it and i got credit karma and found everything that's going on but like he said if you get a credit card just put like a phone bill or something on there yeah you don't want to like, use all use of it only 30 percent on that credit card yeah you know you don't want to drain you. it like i got my coles card they gave me like 300 bucks i'll spend like <clears throat> maybe 100 bucks and i'll pay it back right away like it's never late Yep. And then you just you just pay it. You know what I mean? Don't make payments. Just pay it off. No, quick. you want to. Yeah, you want to get the whole thing off. Yeah, because then you don't got interest, and then it builds way faster. Like, um, they want to give me credit card. My wants to give me like a five hundred dollar, uh, like a Capital One card. Yeah. <coughs> I haven't is, I haven't done it yet, but I'm kind of I've been thinking about it. That's that's what they would call a secured credit card because it's basically, a low yeah, you, amount credit card. Yeah. Like I could go to my bank and start my own secured credit card. I could give them a certain amount of money and I would pay myself back for a year and then they would give me my money back and then they would give me an established line of credit for however much I had. So then I would be paying them back instead of paying myself back. See, I don't, uh, I just don't like credit <coughs> cards because I'm not patient. Like things like this, the mic, like I'm just not patient enough. So I'd look at that credit card and be like, well, I can level up real quick. And yeah, I yeah, I can go like, knock everything out and just get what I need and pay it off slowly. Yeah. It's just you get a lot of interest doing and that. that's how I got myself fucked. Really yeah, yeah so I that's some, how everyone does it. Stuff they max like, out and then they're like, I'm good. And then the payments, like even if you're making small payments, it still fucks you. Yeah, well, especially when you get into the $1,000 range, then it's like, Yeah, that's bam. a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, uh, and then you're like, fuck, I got the money. It's right here. Oh, like, it's, it's I'm looking at it. Dude, I can just go buy some shit right now. Like having, pay it back. <laughs> having a card there just to be like, it's just, it's the worst. Like, it's... Pop new shoes, some food, oh. fucking jewelry store, and you owe money on all of it. It's great. Yeah, I I did that with, like, two credit cards, and, like, it, sh it was like, oh, I should never have done that, because the gear I got wasn't even, like, worth. I got a Karma drone, and I traded that for my camera. It just wasn't worth it. I yeah. Just, like, basically, like, negative equity, negative equity, negative equity. Just yeah. fucking going. But, I mean, I finally figured it out, and by the time I figured it out, I was like, well, I can't even get a credit card now because I'm maxed out. <laughs> See, that's my thing. That's why I haven't sprung to get it yet. Because <coughs> I could get it, and then, like, I'm going to be – it'll be. I bet it'll be all right for a little bit, and I'm going to find something I really want, and I'm going to be like, fuck it, just charge it to the card. I'll pay it back. You know what I mean? It's I helping that. me anyway, and then I'm going to be like, come time to pay it back, and I'm going to be like, man, I got – I gotta pay for like rent, my storage unit, my other credit card, my phone bill. My car's broke again. I gotta fix that. It's like oof. That's why I yeah. should have never bought that shit with that other credit card. <laughs> That's I gotta pay everything back. They say to like take your phone bill, put it on the credit card, have that be the only thing on the credit card, and hook that credit card up to your bank. Yeah, exactly. It just takes it out every month and you just pay it back. Yeah, because it's not about how much you spend. It's about spending over time just consistent spending yeah they so, just want to see you pay your bills they don't yeah. want to see you spend a grip and then pay a grip or spend 20 bucks and pay 20 bucks just pay your bill just fucking be consistent on what you spend and pay it back and then they're gonna be like all right we can give him three thousand dollars on a credit card and we know he's gonna pay it back yeah that's like that's why credit karma is so awesome they can tell you exactly what you owe where you owe where you need to go mm -hmm. yeah i like credit karma i got on there and i'm like i don't owe anyone anything i'm like what and i'm going through my established credit and it says like three months from kohl's yeah and i'm already at like a 675 and That's i had good. no credit prior you know what i mean like i've yeah. never i never had a credit card i've never done anything. like my phone bills in my name but i'm on my mom's plan so i didn't even know this whole time i've been paying my phone bill and it's doing nothing for my credit because it's on hers yeah it's not even like in my name like wow. if i were to call you on your landline or something it would come up as my mom's name oh my god which well, has been like that for years, I guess. I didn't, and I tried calling, and I was like, this is stupid, how much, I want to get on my own plan. Yeah. And they're like, well, you're looking at like 75 bucks a month for your phone on top of service, and right now I pay like 40. Yeah, well, yeah. And it's like, 
oh, I'd be kind of stupid to switch to get the little bit of credit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't. Think and they still do a much. credit check, even if I wanted to like just apply. Yeah, just apply for my own thirty, forty dollar a month plan. They do a credit check and shit. So like, they could. There's a possibility of like not even getting it. That's why. I Which is straight like talk. straight fuck? talk. You buy the fucking car. You buy the card. You're good. Go online every month, once a month, pay my bill. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I had AT T AT and T before. It's just too much. It's like a hundred dollars. And then, yeah. then See, once... I got the Note eight through T Mobile and I don't even pay that for my for my Note eight plus my service is like forty or fifty bucks, something like seventy five bucks maybe, but I also got like an eight hundred dollar phone when it when it came out. It was like eight hundred bucks. Well, when I got it it was seven fifty, eight hundred bucks or something. See that's the nice thing. You can get a brand new phone and a plan and you yeah, and just pay it Locking off. Out, yeah. And then I could I could go in later and I could be like, yeah, I want to add this speaker or like this case to my plan, and I could just pay it off with my plan, which oh, is I didn't dope. Know that. Yeah, wh- that's the one thing I do like about phone services. Like I could go get a three hundred dollar Bluetooth speaker and throw it on my plan and pay monthly for it on my phone bill, or a, a new phone case or some headphones or anything they sell yeah. there, and just put it on my plan and pay it off like I would my phone bill. See, if I wanted to do that, I'd have to go buy a new phone, <laughs> like nine hundred dollars. Yeah, but you wouldn't have to pay it all up front. You would like a hundred bucks down and walk out with sure. service and a phone. If I went somewhere else, but for like straight time. T-Mobile, like T-Mobile at least, that's all it was. I gave them like 150 bucks down or something that covered the charges to start. Yeah. To start the the service. The service and then my and my phone. And I think I might even got might even got a case from them. That's not bad. That's pretty good. That's a pretty yeah. good deal. And it was like an eight hundred dollar phone, which I had to pay off for two years or whatever it was, but Yeah, they get out the big contract paper. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? If it breaks, it's like 100 bucks to get a new one. I'd rather pay 100 bucks to get a new $800 phone than have my phone break and have to get stuck with a $100 phone that doesn't want to charge or some stupid, you know what I mean? Yeah. See, I've had my phone for like three years. I broke the battery. I broke the screen. I broke the... Yeah, this port. is my second replacement phone because last winter I slipped and fucking went to catch myself and smashed my phone on a rock because I like just slipped and ate shit and... Destroyed my phone. Now I got glass missing out of my camera again. I got a. Oh boy. I get like three replacements though within the, the two period? years. Yeah, which many, is pretty how dope. How long are you through that then? So I mean, you get like a thousand, twelve hundred dollar phone, and you could get three of them, and they're like a hundred bucks a pop. If I were to break one, it's like a hundred dollar deductible. Oh, and then yeah. they'll send me the phone, and then I won't. I don't even send my phone in until have till I have the new Dude, phone yeah. and everything switched over, and then I send them my old one. That's a pretty sweet deal. Yeah. So it's like. I didn't know. I didn't. I kind of like the plan, like yeah, especially for a Samsung where you can't replace the screen, just like an Apple phone. Like you right, just stand snap it, it back in. Yeah, same, anyone can do it. Yeah, same amount of money as you as replacing a screen, and it's just and like, it's like new phone expedited shipping or something too. So it's like two or three days to get your new phone. Two days. I, I'd almost use that at the end and then just like hundred dollars. Here you go, brand new phone. Boom, paid off. <laughs> right, exactly. And they even said like, <coughs> I don't know how, how much I have left on my plan. <clears throat> But I could pay the hundred bucks, get a new phone, a brand new phone, and then turn it back into T-Mobile and be like, cancel my payment. I want that phone. And then they'll wipe that phone out because it's a brand new one. Yeah. So they'll wipe out my my plan that I have left, whatever is left, and then just give me a new phone and start that plan. And I don't even think I have to have any money down. I think that's a business strategy because then, then you're, just, <laughs> you're stuck paying them yeah, two you're more still, years. You're still stuck either way, but now you got the upgraded shit. <laughs> Oh, I mean, yeah. I want the iPhone 11 Max Pro. I want the three cameras. I mean, like... This one's got three cameras on it. This yeah. Mac, this Note 8, it's got two in the back and one up front. And mm. then there was another one. It was called, like, the Ultimate A or something. at had five cameras. It was ridiculous. See, people... It had, like, make... three in back and, like, two up front. Something, like, just ridiculous. I don't even know what they're for. We're going to see a whole phone back where it's just cameras eventually. Like, people make fun of that, but, like... Phone mm-hmm. cameras are very limited in space. So, like, how else are you going to get all those ranges? Maybe right. more phone cameras. <laughs> See, I'm not even sure how to use my third camera or if it's something that happens automatically. I have no, I have no idea. <laughs> Just like, it takes fe- take pictures. The features are really advanced now, though. Like, you can do so much. Yeah, I don't know how to edit, so I don't even go into it. But I was like, this fucker's got three cameras. I was like, it's got, like, a... 23 megapixel camera or something in the back or something crazy. I'm that like, all right, 23 bad. megapixel, like, that's pretty good. Like, I think my camera is like a 32 megapixel or something like that. That's a pretty good. That one? Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's 32. I'm not, sh- I'm not exactly sure. I'm not sure specs, what this but... one is. I know the cheap ones are like 8 megapixel up yeah, front and like 16 12. in the back and they're trash. Yeah. Then you get into like the expensive phones and then you start getting up there. 
Well, I saw, I got pans on with the new 11 and the wide mode. Oh my God, that's so wide. It's crazy. Yeah. The widest lens that they have. Yeah, it's really nuts. Like the technology they have. In See, and it's like people are buying phones nowadays just for the camera. That's why solely why I bought this phone. But yeah, just Because I like taking pictures and then like the phone that I had, I had like a S8 and it was all right. But then this was like, by the time I got this phone, this was the same price I paid for the S8 anyway. So, you so I just got it. Yeah, I just got the Note 8, and it was way better phone. It was bigger, more memory, it was faster, better, way better camera. You do so much <laughs> on a phone, too, now. Like, even, even Adobe has, like, all the apps on the computer. They have, like, Adobe Premiere Rush where you can edit all your videos on your phone, Photoshop, Lightroom. Like, you can just anything on your phone, you can edit, you can do it, like, creative-wise. I should know how to learn how to do I could show you. I mean, like... I don't know how much it is to get those because it's monthly subscriptions now, but it's dope. Like I can take a photo on my phone or take it from my camera via wireless transfer and uh, edit it on my phone. Yeah, see, then you could be on the go doing the shit. You yeah. don't need a computer. So I don't even own a computer. I haven't owned a laptop or a computer in probably five years or more. Well, just wait until phones phones get a little bit more advanced. I have a feeling that like phones, like they're, that's where it's going to be. Like They're going to connect it to... Like, you're not even going to have to connect it to a keyboard, but you could. Because you can connect, like, Apple products, like, up to screens and shit. So I would imagine so right. if you did it right, you can connect your phone up to your, your screen. And they're pretty powerful, so you could do all your, your business shit just from your phone. Because they, people yeah. have their laptops hooked up now to your, their screens. And they're just sitting there doing everything. So if you just had your phone plugged in, nothing else, you take your phone on the go. And plus you have wireless chargers now, so you just plop it on there. Connects to everything. Yeah, I got a bunch of them. Them wireless yeah. chargers are great. My Apple earpods, the the AirPods or whatever, they they connect on wireless. You just plop them down and just really, bloop. yeah, just start charging. Are them any good? Are they oh, worth I the fucking six hundred bucks or whatever they cost? That. Oh, they don't cost six hundred. They cost one hundred and fifty. Oh, really? Yeah, I they, thought they were stupid expensive. Not, <clears throat> Everyone was talking about them the, like they were crazy the expensive. The pros, the brand new ones that came out, they're like 300 bucks or something. But like the case for the originals charge, and then the earbuds themselves have a battery in them. So like you can listen to music, plop them in the case, the case charges them up on the go. It's pretty sweet. Like the technology in those just astounds me because for the longest time I was like, I don't want them. I don't want them. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to be a part of the trend like that and walk around and with they fucking have good Bluetooth ass, buds in my ears. Good ass distance that you can. They go. sound good though. Like bass sounds good in them. It sounds good for music or does yeah, it sound like I mean, a megaphone in your ear? The bass, ear? you're not going to have like a sub in your ear, but like. No, but I mean, it they, sounds good it at sounds, least. I think it sounds good better than my studio headphones, but that's just listening. That's not stats or facts. Right. That's just like, yeah. But I love them. I listen to my work. I I've never them. played with them. Um, I know the original Apple earbuds were, are, I mean, were pretty all right. I don't yeah. like the shape. I'd rather have the rubber, <coughs> little rubber thing that like fucking in your ear. You know what I mean? Yeah. These don't have that. No, like I don't normal. like the shape. It almost hurts my ears because oh, I gotta, those? I keep having to put them in. I feel they like they fall, fall out. They fall out of my ear sometimes. Right. And like then you gotta keep putting them it? in, and your ear gets kind of stressed out because you're just trying to jam a piece of plastic in there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I personally <laughs> like them, but like. There's like Beats and there's other ones that you could try that are wireless too. Yeah, I know Beats has got one. Beats is so overrated. I had a oh, pair I of know. Beats and they, for what they cost for them headphones, they're ass. They're not, they're not that good. You could find like some competition headphones, like studio headphones, studio headphones. I guess they wouldn't be competition if they're headphones, but I mean, I think it's just because of the brand they're out there that they're just branded. Yeah, right. it's exactly what it is. Like the Beats pill, and then everyone had to be, everyone had to have a little chunk of the Beats pill. All the rappers got their own Beats pill. Everyone had and their they, own Beats. Had they got the, the the micro marketing or whatever. They have them all the Beats pills all over their music videos, and like people are buying the shit out of them. And like the the speakers were all right. Oh but yeah, the headphones were fucking they, sure yeah. average headphones. Yeah. They weren't nothing special. Like you just go buy a pair of Bose. Or like took, most of them took uh, before they were rechargeable. They took triple A or double A's because I had the, really yeah. And I didn't have the studios, but I had like the one below and the one up from solos. Yeah, they all took batteries, and it was like this is wild. Like wired. I had the wired ones. Yeah, I had you could, like take just you could take take the wire yeah, off you, of it. You the cord. You, yeah, you took the wire off, or you plugged it in, and then the one of the panels opened, and that's where the batteries were. Really? So I didn't have no batteries in mine. I had like you the, might one have of the first ones. No, if did you there were that the over the over the ear headphones. Yeah, I had those, but not I didn't. I had like the I think they were ones. solos. 
Yeah, if you had solos. It was, it was a while ago. It was a couple years ago. Those plugged into your phone and your phone powered them. Yeah, yeah. They didn't take no batteries. Mine the, did. Mine the, took The wire took them, come out of them. I think it's like the took. first, when they first started coming out. Those are the ones yeah. that I had. But I think I think Apple owns those now. But I'm not sure. Someone Beats? bought them. Yeah, someone bought it out. Because hmm. I don't think Dre has them anywhere, anymore. Or it's not Beats by Dre. It's just Beats. Because <laughs> I know... I know they did a collaboration with a bunch of different vehicle makers and a lot of different cars were coming out with the Beats Audio and, f- and cell phones and laptops and fucking v, uh, everybody was doing the Beats Audio thing. VW and Fiat, those are two of them. I see them in the little Fiat 500s, like yeah. there's a big ass sub in the back. And I'm like, yeah. Jesus, like one sub. I look on the other side, nothing. I'm just hoping that dual. No, they never do. Oh, but like you can so get like the ass. Chargers. The Chargers come with like a uh, like a square L7, like a 10 inch L7. Oof. Or maybe it's a L5, but it's a square it kicker sub. They they sound all right, but anything stock isn't really going to want to do, which isn't going to do what you want it to do. Even even Fender, even the Fender kits. I haven't seen them. Uh, yes, yeah, so like the the 2019 Final Edition Beetle had a Fender kit, and a lot of the like other Fender, the guitar brand. Yeah, yeah, they. Have I Fender. bet they screamed. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't pumped it up enough. I haven't connected a phone to be like. Turn it up, yeah. I suppose you gotta drive different cars all the time. <laughs> yeah, all the time, and I never think about connecting my phone. But I see the Fender system all the time, and I'm like, I wonder how hard that bumps from just a stock. I got it. Got to sound pretty good. I didn't know Fender was doing collaborations with cars. VW, I know for sure, but I don't know about any other car. But yeah, yeah I didn't know Fender. That's got to be crazy. I'd imagine it sounds pretty fucking good. They're one of the leading names in the game. They have been for years. I don't think they put anything too crazy in there, though. I think it's just, like, speakers and maybe a speaker on the bar, like, in the front by the window. Just something. It's not anything right. crazy. It's not, like, a sub. But that Beats one. I was really hoping the Beats would pound a little bit louder in those little... Yeah, that's what they kind of portray themselves as, the, the bass and the... But- they're the, not. the rap music and they want the bumps and then it's they're they're not that loud. Plus they're dying out a little bit. I don't I don't really see people with the beats. I see people with the AirPods more than the beats. Yeah, everyone wants the AirPods or the cheap AirPods. Yeah, the, the knockoff AirPods. Gen ones, Gen twos, and now they have those. Well, you get like the ones. dollar store ones too now. Every everyone's got their <laughs> their own AirPods and you get them for like forty bucks, fifty bucks, and it's like I don't like them. You gotta charge them. Yeah, I if mean, I want to listen to music for ten hours straight at work or something, I'm gonna have to charge it. Mine lasts for like six hours, solidly. One will last six hours. Yeah, because I have one in at a time, so I can still hear my bosses. Oh, you don't have to use both of them. Nope, you can use one at a time, and the phone connects to it automatically. There's also this really cool listening mode where you can set your phone on the table, walk away from it, have one in, and then this app allows you to listen. Your phone listens around, like it uses all of the mics on there. And anything that's going on, you can hear through the earbuds, almost like a spy. What? Yeah, it's fucking crazy. It's Weird. crazy. My coworker showed me it. They walked away with my phone just so they could show me the feature. I could hear them from a good distance away. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't never hear nothing about it like that. Yeah, it's like if you if you're. This really technology is like, getting crazy. This shit scares me, dude. It's paranoia, man. I was out driving. Me and my buddy stress. We were driving back from. We were coming from St. Cloud one day. And uh, we drove past this bar, and he was just like, oh, I wonder if it's a titty club. Just joking. And he he Googles it, and I had GPS going back to my house and music playing through my Bluetooth. He Googled something on his phone, and his phone jumped through my radio and switched my maps on my phone to the place that he just Googled. That's crazy. It was crazy. We were both connected to my Bluetooth, but he wasn't. He wasn't the, the he wasn't, current one. Yeah, you know, he wasn't connected at the same time. He was just like in the system. Yeah. So like, I don't do it. It was fucking bizarre. He got he typed it in, and then I don't know something happened, and my maps on my phones changed to the whatever destination he typed in, and then like kept playing music. It was fucking bizarre. I've never had anything like that. <clears throat> it was. It was weird. I think there was. I think one of us got a phone call or something in between there, and it like you switched, switched the radio. I don't remember, but I remember it happened. And it was it was weird. It jumped it like jumped through my radio and switched my GPS. I'm like, what the fuck? But this dude? shit's so crazy. We don't even know what it does. Yeah, and they're listening all the time. Yeah, I got I, one of those little Alexa speakers. It came free with something yep. my mom bought, like a Google or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it came. She bought a phone or a tablet or something, and it came with it. And that thing is sketchy. Like you'd be sitting in my room across the house, and if I yell something in my room, register. Sometimes it'll pick it up and it'll fucking respond. 
it'll like say thing or it'll try to search something on Google and then you'll hear it, you know, Searching. like you'll hear it. Here's your results or we couldn't find something or it's crazy. Well, you know, that's where the world's <coughs> Gary, I've been watching like Gary Vee podcast and he's like, he's predicting that the world's going towards all audio where you can just demand something like, Hey Alexa, like order a cheeseburger and it'll just order a cheeseburger from the most like known place. Around. Right. Or, I, like, that's what it is coming to. I mean, robots and shit's taking over, dude. It's, People are getting fucking lazier and lazier. And I just want a good AI system where I can just be like, hey, Google, like, what's, what's like, this planet or anything that's on my mind. I want to know. Yeah. Like, I asked Alexa. I, 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 we all, always, all the time, I like showing people. If you ask them, Alexa speakers, if they're recording your, if like, like ask, like, hey, Alexa, are you recording my, gov- are you recording my conversations or are you giving my conversations to the government? And Alexa will reply and tell you that, like, she can't. Something about you got to go on Google and, and search it and figure it out yourself. She can't. She can't tell you. It's not that. against. It's like against her policy, or she's or she doesn't know the answer or something. <laughs> she every time it's the same answer. It's something about you got to go and find it yourself or go That's on Google. Crazy. Or she won't tell you like yes we are because obviously they they're not going to be like yeah we're recording your conversations but it's like where it's got to be storing it somewhere. It's got to know. Well, it also could like, be for marketing purposes because all of these smart TVs that are coming out, they have a little camera on them and a little mic. And it's not for the government that's watching you. It's for the, the people selling the TVs. They want to know what people are talking about. They want to know what's hot. They want to know where your eyes are going. They want to so know you're telling me you're if I'm sitting attention. there watching fucking TV and I start beating off, there's a little camera that watches me beat off on my TV? Well, if you have what a smart TV. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, I got smart TVs. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Like that's you fucked up. Your phones to and shit. Yeah, that's it, fucked up. They have little cameras on them. You can normally tell where they are if you just take a quick. Because I got a nice one. I got like a Samsung. Yeah, and you probably got it recently. I'm guessing. Yeah, it's 55 yeah. inch. Then it probably has some smart like that. TV. But they said that uh, people just it has it on there so they can tell what people are paying attention to, what people are going to want. I mean, I would imagine if you and your buddy are just sitting there pitching ideas and you go, "Hey, what about this?" And they pick up on that. It's like, well, you could see that in two years then. <laughs> right. You saw that well, it's just like Facebook, years. dude. You'd be talking with somebody about something and all of a sudden <coughs> won't even be on Facebook. Have a conversation with somebody and then fucking later on you'll go on Facebook and the shit you were talking about starts popping up as ads. Like, what I have the had that. Fuck? Dude, it happens Google to me all it. the time. Dude. I used to Google RCs back in like 2013 or whatever. Whenever I had Facebook originally, RCs would start showing up. They've been having this for like eight years. Dude, this shit's this stuff. weird. It's only been just getting good. You know Facebook's getting sued for $9 billion for unpaid taxes? What? Yeah. They Facebook's must... got such a big fucking head up their ass, and their policies are so strict, and they want to be such a, you know what I mean? It's Facebook. Like, ah, Facebook. And they're getting sued? I think they're the next one for not off, though. For not paying taxes? Yeah, $9 billion. <laughs> I don't think I think it's from all of the ads that they have, any ads that anyone buys from them that they're probably not paying taxes on. I'm not sure where it's from. I'd have to take a deeper look into it. But also, did you know that Facebook, their like algorithm is for like starting up like fights and stuff, promoting the negative. So that, what do you mean? Well, because if you get a if you get a post about someone talking shit about something, that's gonna get more engagements, more comments, more shares, more likes, more dislikes than any other post. If you post something positive, you're gonna get a few likes. No right, yeah, exactly. No one's gonna comment on it unless it's your like close, close people to you. But yeah, they're like their engagements, you're they want negative because that gets more engagement, more what shares. The fuck? Yeah, it's kinda wild. If you look into it, it's a fucking dark place on Facebook. Because my Facebook, before I deleted it, it was just purely negative bullshit, like, all the time. The memes were fucking negative and dark. <laughs> yeah, bro, my Facebook's blowing up with negativity. <laughs> yeah, but like, I just like the videos, too, just scroll through the videos. I get stuck. It's like a wormhole. It's just like, oh, yep. Johnny's doing this tonight. Four hours later, you're Literally. still going through related videos, and there's beheadings and cute puppy videos, and then there'll be a race car video, and then some... Poor girls getting bullied at school video, and yeah. then all of a sudden Jeffrey Star pops up, and, and then I'm watching how to do uh, epoxy on tape. <laughs> yeah, how to fix it with know. ramen and glue. <laughs> ramen. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, ramen and glue, and them glow in the dark epoxy floors. I love Facebook. Oh, and then I end, I end up just falling asleep and doing it all over again for four more hours. Mm-hmm. And my fa- my phone used to be eight hours, and the bullshit on Facebook now it's eight hours of podcasts. Yeah. 
Facebook's beautiful. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of podcasts that I follow on Facebook too. Facebook. And oh, they're YouTube. on Facebook. I didn't know that they're on Facebook. Well, I mean, they probably start on YouTube and then someone shares them. Yeah. I don't think there's any other. I mean, there might be. I don't personally follow any podcast that I know started on Facebook, but I watch like podcasts that I've seen other places, like on YouTube. Like they'll have snippet that. Yeah, basically, yeah, like a snippet or like that artist will put, you know, that person will have a Facebook page and then, and post, then post shit it. on their Facebook page sometimes. See, that's oh, I wish I could just have a page, like one single Facebook page. Just go on Facebook and don't don't add don't add yourself as a as a like a friend like go on, <laughs> like well cuz if you just log into Facebook, you're technically like a friend, you're not a page or a business. Oh, okay. So if you were to go and start a Facebook and then just strictly have it as a like a business page, you could do that and then you wouldn't have to like I'm sure you could still you could still scroll through people's Facebooks and shit, but oh, then it'd be so it'd be strictly a business page. So like they would you'd have your like anything you want on there, you know what I mean? Your business title and then people could hit you up on there strictly for that. And you could put hours and you know what I mean? I would just make a business page or like See, a have, blog page or something. I have a page. It's through Marie's Facebook. I thought I deleted it when I deleted my page. She still has it. I'm thinking about renaming it everything and just like starting to post through her Facebook. But, uh, okay, we are going to end this bad boy. We've been talking for a while. Hell yeah. Do you want to promote any of your socials or anything? Are you worth following? Oh, yeah, I'm worth following. Look me up. <coughs> Kyle Runico on Facebook. Yeah. All I right. think that's what it is. I don't think I have my last name anything weird anymore. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It was mind. like fucking Baby Dick Sanchez on Facebook. <laughs> so if anyone ever seen the Baby Dick Sanchez, that's me. It was going around for like a solid year. I had people messaging me all the time. Or like, I'd see him in public, and they'd be like, "What's your name on Facebook?" Kyle Baby Dick Sanchez, and they're like, "That's you!" Like, well, people, yeah. I got flagged. It oh. was Rhino Big D Swang, and it got flagged, so I put it to Baby Dick Sanchez, and it fucking sat there for the longest time, and then I changed it back to Runico. <laughs> Someone I can't remember. Oh yeah, it was like Sick World. He said that a fan flagged his page for it not being his actual page because it wasn't his actual name. So Facebook took his whole page away. Mm -hmm. And then he was promoting on yeah. Instagram saying, hey, like, some like little kid took my page down. <laughs> but I know, I'm it's real so me. stupid. Yeah, and then they want to not pay taxes. Yeah, that's... For $9 billion or whatever it is, but they're bitching about, that's not the real person. If you change your name on Facebook and you have to verify it, Facebook asks you for a picture of your ID. No way, really? I had to give Facebook a picture of my ID to be able to change my name back to my name. I did, I've ne I have never tried to change my name. That's It's fucked. stupid. So I, I sent him a picture, but I covered up like my, my... I sent him basically just the picture and my name, and that was enough. They didn't need my, my whole... Well, that's good. I that wouldn't have sent him my whole ID, but that's yeah, they want they a picture of your yeah. ID if you want to change your name on Facebook. But if you start a new Facebook, they don't. Imagine if Sony or Xbox did that. Like, I need to make sure that you're actually. I'd, I wouldn't use it. I'd go off the grid, dude. If electronics start asking me for my ID, it's gonna be like that, though. That's like, ridiculous. Everything we're seeing in the movies, dude. Elon Musk wants to die on Mars. That's his his whole goal. He wants to die on Mars. So I think. What the fuck, dude? Ten years ago, I was cool with like my little. When at uh, ten years ago, dude, when touch screens were just kind of coming out. And we were still playing fucking Tetris and okay. happy about having music on our phones and shit. And now they're like, "You're gonna need to send me a picture of your ID to prove it's really you. If you want, if you want to continue, it's like, what the fuck, dude? This is sketchy. I love those, seriously sketchy. I love those games that are like, oh, but you could be doing this game just like this. Download now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You want to give us an outro? This What's the outro? V, just this has been the soup cast in that deep ass voice of yours, Kyle. <laughs> this has been the soup cast with your boy Kyle and Justin. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for having uh coming on to the cast, dude. Oh yeah. We'll have you on soon, talk about some summer fishing stories. Okay.